Hello, hello. So today we're going to take a quick look at airways and why they're used in aviation. So what exactly is an airway? An airway is a defined corridor or section of the sky which connects two locations and they're mainly used for IFR flying. Originally, airways were created between VOR and NDB stations. Then intersections were added to the airway system. An intersection is the point at which two radials from two VOR stations crossed over, or intersected. Intersections are usually given names containing five letters. Nowadays, with the growth of GPS technology, waypoints have been created which are very similar to intersections, in that they have five letter names. We'll look at these in more detail shortly. Airways are divided into two general categories. You have low altitude airways, which serve light aircraft, and high altitude airways, which serve jets and commercial traffic. Now, airway systems are different depending on where you are in the world, but as a rough guide, low altitude airways range from the ground up to about 18,000 feet, and high altitude airways range from 18,000 feet all the way up to 45,000 feet. As I said, that's just a very general look at things. Now there are naming conventions applied to airways, but again, these differ depending on where you are in the world. That said, all airways that I've found will start with a letter and end with a number. For example, if you have a quick look at low altitude airways passing over Inverness, we have Y906 connecting to the Inverness VOR, and N560 passing north and south with Inverness acting as a waypoint. Airways have certain features that you'll need to be aware of. One of the most important is the MSA, or minimum safe altitude of the airway. You'll find this more often on low altitude airways. So you may be given a minimum safe altitude to safely fly over mountainous terrain, for example, or alternatively, to ensure that you'll be able to send and receive radio signals. Looking at the west coast of Scotland here, we can see that the Y906 airway has an MSA of 5,200 feet. Some airways are also one-way. You can only fly in one direction along them. This is normally indicated by an arrow. So looking at these two airways heading in and out of Northern Ireland, P600 is for flying north only, and P620 is for flying south. The number underneath the airway identifier is simply the distance measured in nautical miles. So let's take a closer look at intersections and waypoints here, just south of Inverness. So there's three on the screen at the moment. Now, when pilots talk about these waypoints, they pronounce the name of it normally, not in phonetics. So for example, if a plane was passing over this top waypoint, the pilot would say, OK, we're flying over Davot now. They wouldn't say, OK, we're flying over Delta Alpha Victor Oscar Tango. It's just too long and it's too confusing. Just as a quick example, the other two would be pronounced as Gussie and Nesdi. So, how would you use airways during a flight? Well, it's predominantly flying using your VOR and DME instruments. Let's plan a flight from Inverness up to a town called Wick. So we have Inverness down at the bottom and Wick up at the top. And I'm currently using skyvector.com to plan this flight. So if you have a look, you can see that we have an airway running over the land, so let's plan to follow that. Having a closer look at Inverness, you can see that the airway is called N560, and it runs between Inverness and a waypoint called Bonby. So to fly this leg of the journey, we would need to depart Inverness and fly a radial of 339 degrees away from Inverness for 23 nautical miles. So if we fly that specific radial for that specific distance, that would put us directly over Bombay. Now let's look at the second leg of the flight. If we look up at Wick first, we can see that the airway is on a radial of 233 degrees. Remember though that we're going to be approaching Wick, so we need the reciprocal radial to track to the Wick VOR, which is simply 233 degrees minus 180, which is 053 degrees. And then looking back, we actually have another waypoint in line from Bonby to Wick called Chin. So looking at Bonby to Chin, that's 7 miles. 
and then chain to wick is 46 miles. So to get all the way from Bonby to wick, we would need to fly a radial of 053 degrees to wick for 53 miles. So, if you want to see a demonstration of this flight plan in action, you can check out my other tutorial on using two VORs to fly, and you'll see that I fly this exact route. So, that's all you really need to know for airways. Now, I know that there is logic behind the naming conventions for all the parts of an airway, but anyone who knows me knows that I like to keep it simple, so I'm not going to go into any more detail about it. In the next video, we're going to look at how we get onto an airway when leaving an airport, and that's by using something called a SID, a standard instrument departure. Hope to see you there, many thanks for watching, and I'll catch you later.